For those of you watching this video on the day that it came out, then you know why I'm wearing this kit. It's the opening match week of the Premier League and Everton taking on Brighton today. Very excited for that, or I was excited, depending on what time of the day you're watching this video. But that's not why we are here. We are taking on New York Red Bulls in the opening round of the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And I think we actually may have a chance this year we've made some moves in the transfer window the opening stage is already off and running we've played nine matches already do we have the momentum to carry us past new york and into the round of 16 we're gonna find out before we get to all of the action on the pitch and believe me there was a lot of action on the pitch we have had a transfer window come and go and we were busy we start with the outs Daniel Herrera, the 20-year-old right back that we were playing on the left side. We got an offer from Atleti San Luis that we just could not turn down. 2.2 million, and he is off to Mexico. But Herrera is not the only member of our back line who is out the door, and he's not the only one going to Atletico San Luis. 21-year-old Freddy Gonzalez had a $1 million release clause in his contract. It was met by the Mexican club, so the two teammates are reunited. Finally found a home for 28-year-old Mexican U-20 international Emilio Lara. He is off to Al Patesh. Still a little sad on this one, but we have finally found a new home for Ramon. The 32-year-old Brazilian is going back home to Kiaba. After missing training a couple of times, we had enough of the shenanigans of Marvin Alfaro, so we shipped him off to sporting. Diego Mendez was having trouble cracking into the lineup, only making two appearances in his entire stay here at Saprissa. So we have shipped him off to A.D. Sarchi. Michael Sambataro fell down the pecking order with some of the moves that we, we ended up making on the incoming side, which we'll get to in a second. So we have loaned him out to Liberia for the year. Or should I say the rest of the year? Joining him, well, not at the same place, going to Escorpiones for the season out on loan is 19-year-old Juan Carlos Sabaya. Which brings us to the ins. We wanted to make some early moves to the depth on our back line, and we turned to 22-year-old Costa Rican Carlos Barantes, who could also play in our defensive midfield. We turned to Tunisian international Hichem Bakar to take over as our left back. Added additional overall depth in 19-year-old Costa Rican international, already three caps at the age of 19 for Jorge Valverde. And if you got $3 million to spend in the player that scored five goals against you in two matches in the playoffs in the opening stage, and you can get him, and he's 20, you're going to do it. Juan Diego Secaria is now wearing the Saprisa Purple. I am anticipating in the comments concerns that Barrientes is just 5'10", but the defense is not our problem, and neither is our offense. Bakar getting involved early. His shot on Jimenez couldn't deal with it, and Tusha right on the doorstep to pot it home. Less than a minute later, out wide, Hugo Cordero sends it into the middle, finds Marrera. Jimenez, again, can't deal with it. 2-0, your score goals in the 21st and 22nd minutes for our second consecutive clean sheet in all competitions. Herediano at home is going to be more of a chess match. Nobody scored in the first 90 minutes, but the cross from Tusha found Ramirez, who turned and fired one home, which would give us the only goal we would need. Just two shots on target out of the 12 we took. A bit of a concern, so we worked on a couple of things, and I think, I think we're going to be okay. Because we followed that one up on the road at Grezia, and we took it to him. Less than eight minutes in, ball over the top. Cordero putting home the goal. Cordero would find his scoring boots again. Bran into the middle, headed home. Barrientes picking up his first goal in a Saprisa kit. 5-10 be damned. And then Bran would feed Cordero again to complete the brace. 3-0, your final score. Once again, a ton of shots on goal. Not as many on target, but going from two to six, we're seeing improvement. He got off to a slow start in his first couple of matches with Saprisa, but Juan Diego Sacaria found the back of the net from the penalty spot to give us a 1-0 lead at home against Punta Reynas. And then a beautiful job of forechecking by Edward Lopez, putting it into the middle. Sacaria with a wide open net. 2-0 your final. That is five consecutive clean sheets for Mohamed Kante in all competitions. And as we hit the road against Sporting, it looked like early on 
That strand was going to continue. Nice ball through Marrera. Cordero's shot blocked, but it comes right to Tushu. Puts it home for the 1-0 Saprisa lead. We would add another before the half. Tusha in the middle. Marrera part of it again. Cordero, great first touch. Beautiful drive. 2-0 at the break. But Sporting would come on back, and we would see our clean sheet record broken. Rojas in nobody around him beats Conte to make it 2-1. They would add another. Played into the middle. Perez chipping it into the top corner to tie it at two. And that is where we would end up. So winning streak over. Clean sheet streak over. Undefeated streak. Still rolling on. And that is a streak that would continue at home against Alajuelense. We beat them 2-1. Dylan Getch getting back on the scoreboard. Nassim Innocente scoring again off of the corner. 24 shots on goal to 4. A trend we are hoping to take on the road to Liberia. And in the first minute off the corner, Brand finds Innocente to make it 1-0. Cordero would miss a penalty in the 10th minute. But less than 60 seconds later, Innocente would add his second of the match. And we are once again taking advantage of Liberia at home. Yeah, they beat us 6-1 that one time. I don't know what that was. Lopez makes it 3-0 in the 60th minute. Alejandro Brand again off of the corner. This time, Valverde playing it across. Edward Lopez drilling it home. And off of a throw in, Castro would put it into the box. Tusha delivers a drive along the grass, beating Ruiz to make it 6-0. Liberia would finally get one back in the 75th minute. Rodriguez beating Conte. Not quite sure what he was doing there. And Edward Lopez would put the stamp on it, feeding Secaria in the middle, his fourth goal in a Saprisa shirt. 6-1, your final. Ten shots on target in this one. I know I'm harping on it, but you saw where we were. You see where we are now. We are just getting better and better. Things were a little tougher for us at home against Cartagena, a team challenging for the closing stage title. But an early penalty would give us a 1-0 lead. A couple of minutes later, Tusha's header into the middle. Finds Edward Lopez in behind the defense. 2-0 Saprisa, but Cartagena would take it to us in the second half. 68th minute ball fed forward. Contreras with a beautiful shot across his body. But that would be all that they would get. We held off the Cartagena onslaught. They're a pretty good team. 2-1, your final score. We remain unbeaten. And if we were going to continue that streak, it didn't look good early on on the road against Perez Zeladon as Bakar is credited with an own goal five minutes in to give the home team the lead. Perez Zeladon was very tough in the opening stage and actually outperformed where we thought they would. But a beautiful shot from the edge of the box from Ramirez would tie things up at one and then a beautiful ball forward by Steven Aquista. Valverde, Sacaria getting involved. Aquista started the play. He ended it 2-1 Saprisa. We would add a third later on in the first half. 39th minute, ball fed forward right on the doorstep. Unguarded, Cordero putting it home. We would make it 4-1. Just before the half, Ramirez with his second goal of the match. Now, Perez Zeladon would get one back and try to stage that comeback, making it 4-2 off of the right foot of Rodrigo. But when all was said and done, it was all Saprisa. Johnny Castro going coast to coast, putting it past the goalkeeper. His first goal in the closing stage and 5-2. So after nine matches, we're exactly where we need to be. Eight wins, one draw, no losses, a plus eight. Goal difference, 25 points on the board, and a nice eight point lead over Cartagena, who do have a game in hand on us. So, hopefully, we're feeling warm, we're feeling good, because the whole point of being here is to beat New York. And it's something we're going to have to do without the services of Nassim Innocenti. He picked up a yellow card in his last continental competition, which disqualifies him for this one. So Barantes is going to get the start next to Duarte. It's going to be Bacar and Cordero rounding out the back four. Conte, of course, is going to be in goal. A midfield two of Aquista and Castro. Tusha and Getz are going to be on the wings. Marrero manning the 10. Lopez up front. This, my friends, is where the rubber meets the road. 
We are here. The whole point of all of this is to win the CONCACAF Champions Cup. If we cannot get past teams like New York Red Bull, then we have a problem. Saprisa is probably one of the best teams that we could manage in this challenge, since, you know, we're not managing in MLS or in Mexico. So we have to take advantage of the team that we have put together, and hopefully the team that we have put together is going to be able to do a job. Lopez playing it across, gets, tracking it down, overruns it, cleared away, and Cordero will settle it down. Now, we are under no illusion that this is going to be an easy task. We are on the road for this first leg. We are heavily underdogs in this one. Cordero, though, taking it in, trying to put it in top shelf. New York starting to turn things on in the latter portion of this first half. So they look to feed the ball forward. Great sliding tackle by Cordero, but it looks like he takes out Ramos, and he's off of the red. An unbelievable turn of events. We're going to move Andre Castro back to the back line. He'll swap places. Duarte will go out to the right. We'll move Steven Aquista into the midfield. We do want to leave him kind of deep as well. And he'll get a little support from Marrero. Not what we wanted to see in this match. And the ensuing free kick from a dangerous position. About 25, 26 yards out, just to the left of the D. Conte has his line set. Looks like we have a four-man line. Leon Flock taking it and missing. I'm not, I don't know what's hurting me more right now. The fact that we are down to 10 men in a massively pivotal match. Or that Leon Flock, who I know from the Philadelphia Union, is now playing for New York. Regardless, we're going to have to play the second half with out... Hugo Cordero and down to 10 men. Pretty even though first half, four shots on goal apiece. We did manage to get one more on target. They clanked one off of the woodwork though, so that probably skews the numbers a little bit. Possession tilted still a little bit in Saprice's favor, but it has started to tilt back towards New York in the latter portion of this first half. And I don't know if going to a more balanced mentality is a good thing or not for us as the Red Bulls look to control off of the opening kickoff of the second half. Played forward. Mujica flipping it ahead. Ramos in behind the defense, but he cannot tuck it past Conte and inside the post. A very early pointed question from the New York Red Bull that just missed its mark. Uh, and here's where we get to the part of the game where the opposition is just going to take advantage of us on 10 men. We're going to see tick attack of passing. We're going to see you know, great defensive plays. We're going to see Saprisa players dribbling the ball right into New York defenders. You know, the normal stuff. Back for Barantes. Bakar once again. Quickly ahead. Tusha. Nice touch around the defense. Now we're getting some momentum. Now we're getting ahead of steam. Tusha across. Willem gets his header. Is just going to be too strong. 7-7, seven to seven, your shots on goal so far. We're going to make a couple of changes. Uh, Steven Aquista is tired. Alejandro Brand is coming in. Willem gets, uh, you've been semi-effective. So Sekaria is going to make his way onto the pitch. A couple of changes with about 20 minutes remaining in this match. Trying to hold on. We've been down to 10 men since the 43rd minute. But so far, so far so good. Uh, Ojeda, though, with a throw in on the final edge of the final third. Leon Flock to Stankovic. Ojeda, can we bottle them up, please? Feeding it across. Bakar is the only one there. Barantes playing it back to the goalkeeper. That was super dangerous. But Conte able to get it clear, but New York wins it back. Vargas, Stankovic over the top. He's got Dixon Wilson in, and somehow he missed. I got to tell you, the greatest defensive player on the pitch for us right now is the New York Red Bulls offense. Four minutes added on will come and go. We are going to hang on to a nil-nil draw in the first leg from Red Bull Arena in a very evenly contested match. They were able to edge us on shots on goal 14-12. to 12. We actually held on to the possession lead we had in that first half. In fact, we built upon it. Ending up holding the ball 56% of the time, not too shabby, down to 10 men for the final 47 minutes of this match. So, all in all, an excellent foundation to build on. We've got a match at home in the league against San Carlos. Monday, we're going to find out how we do in the second leg. 
If we could hold New York Red Bull on the road to a nil-nil draw down to 10 men, just imagine what we can do at home with a full 11. Yeah, we're not going to have Hugo Cordero, but we'll make do. Hope to see you then. Have yourselves a fantastic weekend. Make sure you like this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you just haven't done so already. And come back Monday to see if we can make it to the round of 16. Until then, bye-bye.